We know Cocktail Audio from the great network audio products for ripping, streaming and even recording. The HA500H is no streamer. It is a completely balanced digital analog converter, preamp and headphone amp. The HA500H lets you select analog and digital inputs, change the volume and send the signal to a power amplifier, active speakers or headphones. The cabinet is made of machine aluminium and is available in black and silver. The HA500H should be connected to an amplifier or power amplifier and loudspeakers. If you have powered speakers, speakers with built-in amplifiers, the HA500H is connected directly to the speakers using either RCA or XLR cables. To send music to the HA500H you can make a digital connection from any digital audio source like a CD player, death recorder and so on. You can also connect a computer to it using a USB cable. The computer can be any desktop, laptop, Raspberry Pi, tablet or smartphone. If it has Bluetooth, you could also connect it to the HA500H over Bluetooth at the expense of some sound quality since Bluetooth uses lossy compression. Using the computer you can play music from its hard disk, but if the computer is connected to the home network it can also play music from streaming services, internet radio or from a local NAS. You do need additional software to do so and the sound quality can be influenced by the source and the software you use. The supplied infrared remote control lets you set volume, select an input and do setup settings. If you don't want the computer in your listening room you can place it elsewhere, connect it to the network and use a so called network bridge to connect the cocktail audio to. The network bridge is connected to the computer of the home network while the network bridge is connected to the cocktail audio by a USB cable. Using the right software you can control the music played using a smartphone or tablet. Where often audio quality comes in standard 43 cm wide housings, the HA500H is less wide than it is deep. It measures 270 by 333 by 90 mm and weighs a hefty 6.9 kilos. On the front left a digital encoder to scroll through menus. Selecting is done by pressing the knob. Then below that five buttons for engaging the tube section, headphone impedance settings, opening the setup menu, selecting line out or headphone out and selecting between balanced and unbalanced operation for both line out and headphones. On the right of it the infrared sensor. The TFT LCD screen shows on the top left the chosen input while in the middle general information is shown. The right part shows what output is selected, line out or headphones in either single ended or balanced mode. The lower part of the screen contains the meter section. Three meter modes are available. A normal peak meter with bars above each other, two peak meters next to each other that show modulation from the middle to the side and the classic style VU meters. Further to the right we see a 6.3 mm headphone socket, a 4 pole XLR balanced headphone socket the standby button and the volume knob that doubles as a mute knob when pressed. On the rear we find the ISC main socket, the power switch, the AES EVU digital input, the SPDIF digital input, the antenna for Bluetooth reception and the TOSLINK digital input. Below that the USB B connector for linking to a computer, the I2S digital input in the shape of an HDMI socket and a trigger input and output. The analog inputs and outputs are on the left, a set of balanced line outputs on XLR, a set of single ended line outputs on RCA and above them analog balance inputs on XLR and single ended analog inputs on RCA. Opening the HA500H shows us a linear power supply for the analog audio. We see a toroidal transformer with behind it the rectifiers, voltage regulators and the NKF capacitors for buffering. There is a switching mode power supply for the digital electronics. 
I also found local voltage regulators, which always is a good thing. The Bluetooth radio is found on a small board fixed to the rear by the antenna mount. Below it the board with digital and analog input circuitry. On the bottom the digital and analog output circuitry and the control electronics. If you follow the grey cables running to the front, you will see the tube stage using two ECC82 tubes and fine VMAC capacitors. This tube stage can be inserted in the audio part for a tube sound. Remarkable in this price range is the fully balanced electronics from input to output. For convenience there also are single ended inputs and outputs for digital and analog and for the headphones output. The transformer and tube amp parts are each in isolated shielded compartments of the housing. Using the HA500H is straightforward. Select an input with the left rotary encoder, select the output with one of the buttons below it and set the volume using the right rotary encoder. Talking about these encoders, they run very light, my clumsy hands would have loved a more firm feel, but that's personal of course. When increasing the volume using the remote control, you need to press the volume up knob again and again and again, for each press adjust the volume by one step. Keeping the knob pressed didn't work. Cox Audio informed me that this will be fixed in a firmware update. Volume control over USB from player software like Rune or Odevana is not supported. All usual inputs are available. The only strange beast to many will be the I2S input in the shape of an HDMI input. This is not for connecting to the audio remote channel HDMI in your TV, normally labeled ARC HDMI, but for connecting to a digital source that has the special I2S output. MQA is fully supported and if MQA is not used there are three reconstruction filters to choose from, fast roll off, slow roll off and minimum phase. I prefer the latter. AES EPU, SPDIF and TOSLINK are by design limited to 192 kHz. I2S accepts native DSD up to 256 times and DOP up to DSD 128 while PCM up to 384 is supported. Over USB, PCM 384 and DSD 256 are supported. MQA works on all digital inputs. Bluetooth 5.0 can handle AVRCP, A2DP profiles using SBC, APTX, APTX HD, AAC and MP3 formats. Let's start by saying that I'm not much of a headphone listener and thus no real reference in that field. I therefore only review the HA500H as DAC and preamp. I connected the USB input to the SOTM SMS200 Ultra Neo network bridge and used Rune to send the music data. Playing without the tubes engaged and using the minimal phase filter the HA500H sounds seriously good for its price. This is mid set of one material that ends up just below the Brooklyn 2 with Syntex power supply. Character wise it's slightly brighter until the tubes are engaged. Then it sounds slightly rounder, especially in the mid range. Also the already great stereo image gets even better, more detailed. Perfect equipment is not for sale and certainly not for this money, but the HA500 h sounds great at about the same level of other top level products in this price category. Let me get back to the tubes. If we compare the frequency response from digital in to analog line out, we see that without the tubes the curve, the yellow line, is ruler flat from 10 Hz to over 40 kHz. When the tubes are engaged we see a roll off on both sides of the spectrum. That looks quite drastic but if we limit it to the audio band we see a roll off of a quarter of a dB at 20 Hz and four tenths of a dB at 20 kHz. You'll be hard pressed to find analog playback equipment that performs better and there is no need since as such these deviations are too small to notice. And the difference in sound happens in the mid range according to my ears. 
Sooner or later someone will find out what's playing here. At around 2300 euros, local prices might differ, Cocktail Audio has managed to offer a very good sounding DAC and preamp and for those that enjoy headphone listening also both single ended and balanced headphone amps that can be set to low or high impedance. The build quality is very high with perhaps the exception of the rotary encoders that don't feel rock solid. But the manufacturer also used them on other equipment so I suppose they are proving reliable. Last but not least let me mention the design and especially the lovely view meters on the display. Although VU meters ought to respond slower and shouldn't refer to dBs, they are volume unit meters, not peak meters, they look great and why should audio equipment not look good? That's it for this week. There will be another video next Friday as always at 5 pm Central European time. If you don't want to miss that, subscribe to this channel or follow me on the social media so you will be warned when new videos are out. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Many thanks to all that support this channel financially. It keeps me independent and thus trustworthy. If you also feel like supporting my work, the links are in the comments below this video on YouTube. I am Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the HPproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.